Parents of Reddit, what is something your child has done that you can never forgive them for? My stepson came into my life when he was 12. He had a younger brother that was 6 at the time. Also my stepson. Younger brother was relatively normal, but older stepson was having a lot of trouble in school. Got in trouble all the time. Older stepson is in counseling because of his behavior. He's cutting himself in school. There's a suicide attempt. I'm devoting lots of time to trying to help him, trying to fix his life. He's incredibly intelligent and thoughtful. In the middle of this all, we find he has tens of thousands of pictures of child porn on his computer. Edit. Only looked at a small sampling, but it was the prepubescent kind. We delete them, consult a lawyer, bring it up in counseling, lock the computer down, install monitoring software. Stepson figures out how to get around everything, is clearly addicted to child pornography. He's 15, nearly 16. He brings home his 14 year old girlfriend's underwear. I take them away. Edit. His therapy program specifically forbade this. See comments for details. He comes at me with a knife. Police are called, but he's smart and knows how to work them. We find a treatment program to deal with child pornography addiction. Go to counseling once a week and group counseling once a week. Part of this program is admitting your wrongs. You have to come out and admit it in front of the group. He drops a bombshell, he's been molesting his younger brother since he was 6 or 7, and he forcibly raped his now ex-girlfriend. The dad won't press charges because there's no proof, so we have to do this all voluntarily. We have to ask the state to please take him and give him services. If we don't, the state will take his younger brother and place him in protective care. It's a pretty traumatic process. He's removed from the home and placed in a day treatment program by social services, but only after several awkward months. In the meantime, his younger brother is having issues. He throws tantrums all the time, has to be restrained at home. We learn how to restrain our kid to prevent him from hurting himself. Treatment does not go well. He hates the program, hates the restrictions on his life. He's much smarter than the other kids in the program, so he becomes sort of a ringleader. He's labeled high risk and a potential psychopath. Eventually, he's about to turn 18 and the state is going to end their custody over him, since he's a voluntary case. He has to figure out what to do, or he'll be homeless, as he can't come back to living with us. He asks if we could just kick his younger brother out of the home, and make him go live in state care, so he can come live at home. I forgave him for most of it, but I'll never be able to forgive him for that moment, where he was absolutely remorseless, where he asked if he could just take the place of his victim, because the path he had chosen made his life harder. He knew very well what he was asking. He was never sorry for his actions. When I was a kid I was playing outside and took a rock from the driveway and carved I love you mom in huge letters across the side of my mom's brand new Camaro. She cried to her dad because she didn't know what she should do. How could she punish me for saying I love her? My mom usually explodes when she wants to, but this one time she had to keep it all in. She still says she wants to beat my ass because of that. Well, this will be an interesting one. For the record, I'm the son in question. I remember the day when I told my mother that my 17 year old girlfriend was pregnant. Something changed in my mother and it definitely was not for the better. I knew I had fucked up, but didn't truly understand the struggle like my mother did. You see, my mother had me when she was 17 also. She had scholarships to go to art school and potentially make something of herself. She ended up taking care of me instead. I remember my mother looking at me and saying you are stupid if you choose to take care of that child. We got into a fight over it. I felt that, since I was the dumbass that got my girlfriend knocked up, I should be the one to take care of it. I had computer repair skills and a knack for working hard. Finding work wouldn't be that hard, would it? Fast forward a few years and I can understand just exactly what she meant. Please note, I do love my children every single day and wouldn't trade them for anything. I spent those years watching as all my friends grow further away from me. Most got distant and didn't want to talk to a guy who had two jobs and a kid. I was a buzzkill for most of them. I struggled and pushed through everything that I had to take care of her. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to make it for a while. 
two jobs making minimum wages and enough to afford daycare and a one bedroom apartment here in Iowa. I feel I lost a portion of my sanity through those times. I spend most of it wondering what life would be like if I gave her up for adoption and had done what my mother suggested. Would I be happier? I would have graduated and have a job making significantly more money than I do now. I did eventually prosper, but my mother and I have never been the same. She lost custody of me when she was younger because she couldn't keep up. She was definitely proud of me when I received my degree and got a real job. It took 6 years to do what would have taken 2. I still did it though. My mother was never going to forgive me for putting myself through exactly what she went through. I proved her wrong nonetheless. Just because you are destined to fail doesn't mean you will. I have a second beautiful daughter and a wonderful girlfriend whom I plan on marrying next year. This story is kinda the opposite of the question. My mother forgave me for something I never thought she would. This was a few years ago. I had lost my job and was going broke quickly. I needed money for rent and bills and I really had nowhere to turn. One day I just panicked and committed an armed robbery to get a few bucks. I figured that if I wasn't caught immediately, I would get away with it. Five days later the police are at my door. They take me to the station and charge me with robbery. I deny everything, but all I could think of was that the next few years would be in prison. I had only spent five days in jail previously for a DUI to this event. When they booked me finally they told me I could make one phone call. The only number I knew was my mother's. It's been the same since I was a kid. I turned the call down. I was too embarrassed. A few days later I had to go to medical for a physical. The nurse asks if anyone knows I'm in jail. I don't know why I told her, but I mentioned that I chickened out of calling my mom. She points to a phone in the office and tells her I can call her now. I just remember the phone ringing and hoping to god she wasn't home, but she was. I expected her to disown me, but she just seemed more concerned about my safety and if I needed anything. She said she would be proud of me, no matter what I did. The next day the jail tells me I have a visitor. I walk in and there is my mom. She starts crying and just smiles. She tells me that she's happy to see me and that she put $100 on my books so I can buy some supplies because she knows no one else would do it for me. My mother visited me once a month for 2 years. I received cards weekly and even when I told her to stop sending money I would get a random $50. I guess the point is she never gave up on me. My mother and I talk all the time, more than before. I still get cards about once a month with a note inside reminding me how proud she is of me. Don't have kids yet, but I can share something that I did that my parents have never forgiven me for. I won't even use a throwaway. I got my parents in trouble with the police and child services when I was 7. About 20 years ago give or take, I was in the 4th grade, living in a medium sized town in New Jersey. I'm a first generation Chinese American. Both my parents are from Hong Kong and moved to the states in their teens. I was a super hyper kid. Both my parents worked in Nick and came home late. They didn't have the time to take me to peewee soccer or pop warner football. So, I was always the disruptive kid in class, as school was my only real outlet for socialization. To all the kids who grew up with their parents throwing around a football, or a baseball, Thanksgiving dinners, Christmas presents, yeah, I wished I had parents like yours. Anyway, my parents are both very traditional immigrant Chinese people. So when I was bad, my parents used to discipline me. I didn't know any different at the time. My father used to use this bamboo stick or the handle of a feather duster to do it. I just thought that everyone went through the same thing. Well one day at school, a teacher got wind of it. I don't remember how exactly. Maybe they saw a bruise. Maybe I mentioned something. Maybe I wanted the attention. It's all a fuzzy blur, but very quickly, word went from my teacher to nurse. From nurse to principal, from principal onward, you get the point. It got ugly fast. Phone calls were made, and that night detectives were at my house. My parents knew something was up cause they started getting phone calls. When my mom got home from work, I remember she said hey wap instead of my normal name of wapoon. She'd never called me that in my life. I knew I fucked up. It was bad. Very bad. I tried explaining that my dad never hit me cause he was angry or in rage. 
but it was just the way he did things. I guess that lessened what punishments would have come their way. Eventually, things started to clear out. We were lucky I guess. We had to go through family counseling. My parents never forgave me for that. From that till now, I've been treated as a second class citizen until the time I left the house and went to college. I would get the one ply toilet paper while everyone else got the two ply so to speak. I had a kid sister whom they babied and gave the world to and celebrated. Growing up, I felt more like a financial liability to my parents rather than their flesh and blood. I became an angry teenager who listened to a lot of rage against the machine and Papa Roach at the time. I cringed Papa Roach as I type this. I can empathize with both sides though. To my parents, I was their pride and joy, who inexplicably and suddenly became for them this source of terrible shame and remorse. I guess for a proud traditional Chinese man. I hurt him very much, in a world where Chinese men are taught to be bulletproof emotionally. On the other hand I think, dude, this is America. This isn't the same place as where you came from. For many years, I have trying to repair my relationship with my parents. Maybe they fucked up. Maybe I fucked up a little too. It taught me that the world isn't perfect and maybe that's okay. I have some serious fears though about me being a shitty dad as a result of all of these things. I hope not. For what it's worth though, I think I'm stronger for it. I don't harbor any ill feelings anymore, despite how awful it must have been for all of us through those years. I hope that one day they will forgive me, because I know I have forgiven them. Not my child, but this is about my younger brother. He's an alcoholic, and has been for the past 15 years. He's only 32. Anyways, when he drinks he's a completely different person. I'm not talking about a sloppy drunk, but more like a possessed demon, filled with absolute hate. He never finished high school, and barely got his jet. Hasn't worked in the past few years. Our mom supports him financially, car paid for, apartment paid for, spending money provided to him. Basically, she's an enabler and he's a manipulator. His drinking is so out of control, I've had to cut him out of my life. It's sad, because he has a nephew who constantly asks for him, and I just have to tell my son Uncle Drunk has moved far away. My brother has never made an honest attempt at sobering up. In fact, he's full of excuses. I can't have that in my life or my family's life anymore, and for that reason I've completely cut all ties with him. I can never forgive him for putting alcohol ahead of family. Although many problems can be traced to fucked up parents, sometimes people are just broken. Or break. When I worked at a psychiatric hospital, I saw both types. One kid in particular stays in my mind. Until he was 12 he was a normal kid. Then he fell off a picnic table onto concrete and damaged the part of his brain that keeps us from being monsters. Whatever horrible impulse popped into his mind, he acted on. At 16 he had raped kids as young as 13 tried to kill nurses, and unfrightful things. The saddest part was that he told me once that he could remember when he was different, but he couldn't be that way anymore. His parents would have tried to take care of him forever, but he was a big kid, and once he raped a child, the courts took that decision away from them. You can love them, but when you love a sociopath, you must also protect yourself from them, because they feel absolutely nothing. Sometimes people break. Sometimes they are born broken. Friend of a friend, I met the guy in passing a few times, and he was a major asshole and a horrible person. Lazy as all fuck, this guy hated working. All he wanted to do was watch sports, drink, and eat. He worked, only when he absolutely had to, lied to everyone about what he did, yeah, I work for Dell slash IBM slash Big Bank slash Huger Corp in their fuck it department. And was one of those know-it-all bastards who jump into any conversation and make it about them. He would start some job, work for a bit, then quit because it was not challenging enough or they don't pay me enough for my knowledge. Sound like he was the smartest 20 something? He was a 50 year old man child. He starting doing drugs, then lost job after job because he quickly got to the point where he couldn't stay clean for more than a week. I know he was fired from one job for showing up still drunk from the night before, and another because he was found passed out in the bathroom, after shooting up something. Started to sell drugs, to try and make money, got involved with a LTR with a prostitute. 
stole money from his mother. Father died when he was a kid. She was in her 80s, disabled, and not all mentally there. Drove to Oklahoma or Louisiana to gamble at the casinos. Lived in her house. Tried to get her to change her will so he would get everything and made her sign a fake handwritten version. Abused her. Tried to sell the house in some shady mortgage deal and get power of attorney over her. She wasn't really in a mental or physical state to do much other than sit in her chair and cry all day. It didn't help that the hooker girlfriend would sometimes bring Johns to the house when he was there and when he wasn't. The rest of the family tried to do everything they could to get rid of him and his sister was finally able to get power of attorney over her only a week or two before she died. Even though they got her into a nursing home, she declined quickly. Afterwards he wasn't supposed to get the house, but he refused to leave. He basically started to hoard crap inside and barricaded himself in while the family was trying to get him to leave. The police wouldn't get involved, don't know why. Less than 6 months after his mother died, he was killed. Or died of a heart attack. Or something. Remember the prostitute girlfriend? Yeah. She and her 21 year old son showed up one day and beat him to death. I don't remember if anyone knew what was said, but it was loud, with yelling and screaming, to the point neighbors called the police. The son and his whore mother got in their car and drove off before the cops got there. They walked in, found his body, and since they knew who he was, called his sister and aunts to let them know. No charges, no investigation worth a damn, just another druggy dead, as far as they were concerned. After the rest of the family came in to clean up and sell the house, they found drugs stashed in closets and under trash, and anything of value of the mother's gone. Family heirlooms like jewelry and furniture weren't where it had been for 50 plus years. No one knew if he had sold it all before, or if the hooker girlfriend stole it when they killed him. 